Hello, how are you guys doing today? I want to continue talking about dinosaurs today. Uh, and I want to also continue with the theme that, you know, paleontology is in a very ever-changing field. And the stuff that we know, uh, you know, sometimes changes over time. And along those lines, I want to talk about my favorite dinosaur, which certainly falls into that category. And with this dinosaur, we'll go ahead and start at the beginning. In 1878, Edward Cope, uh, that's the same guy, you know, from the Bone Wars that we talked about previously, and we'll probably expand on later. Uh, his team found a very large, partially preserved vertebrae in, I believe, South Dakota. And... This vertebrae, like I said, is partially preserved, so you know, it was only part of it was there. And this vertebrae was about oh, nearly five feet tall, uh, which is huge. You know, there's that's almost as tall as a person. And like I said, it's only partially preserved. When you go in and extrapolate what that would have looked like as a full vertebrae, it's almost nine feet tall. So we're talking a big dinosaur here, and. Uh, yeah, uh, and that was pretty much the only bone that was verified for this dinosaur at that point. And uh, Edward Cope named it Amphicillus fragilibus. Uh, and basically, it was a very large sauropod. And sauropod is like the Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, those types, you know, long. <laughs> Big, big, thick legs, long tail, long neck. Uh, and uh, he used the word uh, fragilimus because this bone, this fossil was very fragile. And, uh, well, we'll get into that. So basically, based off of, you know, what this vertebrae looked like, he believed it was a sauropod, of course, and, and um, of the uh, Diplodocade family. I apologize. I don't know how you say the family, but basically it was like a Diplodocus, which is basically this right here. So like I said, long neck, long tail, very long dinosaur. Now, the Diplodocus, I mean, they all basically look like this. Uh, the Diplodocus is about 90, I believe about 90 feet long. So, I mean, that's, that's huge. Uh, if you extrapolate a nine-foot vertebrae, vertebrae with this, like, this general design, what you can come up to, and, like, the upwards es estimate for the Amphicillus was over 200 feet. Uh, I think, at like, 246 feet. So... This Amphicillus was much bigger than the Diplodocus. Uh, and with that also, you know, this the tonnage, it was just a huge, huge. I mean, we haven't found anything ballpark of that size. And so, yeah, the you know, based on those estimates, it, the Amphicillus... Fragilimus was the largest dinosaur that we have ever discovered. By far, it was the heaviest creature. And it's been, it was the largest and heaviest creature that may have ever actually existed. Uh, and that's, that's amazing. The problem is, is that vertebrae, as far as we know, is the only fossil that's been discovered for the Amphicillus fragilibus. And there's more problems with that. Uh, I was getting to earlier, uh, Cope used fragilimus, or fragile, because the fossil itself, it was the based on where it was discovered, uh, the, the bone was very flaky. So it was very, it was fragile. And long story short, You know, we, they shipped it off off to the east. I can't remember exactly which museum ended up having it. 
Uh, but the reason we don't know, we, no one has seen that that fossil. Um, and we, we believe probably because it didn't survive the trip. Uh, that said, um, you know, because of the Bone Wars and this competition uh, with, with the other paleontologists at that time, there would have been a lot of, you know, heat on Cope if he made up this dinosaur. And no one called him out on it. So while there has been some debate that, you know, either he got the measurements wrong or he just didn't exist at all, I don't, they don't really stand the test of time because he just would have been taken to the woodshed by his competitors if no one else believed this. So for, for all practical purposes, we can take his notes. We had notes with the measurements and a drawing, and we can take this and, and basically, yeah, this bone was found. It was pretty much what it was measured, and it belongs to a very large dinosaur. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, the problem with that is, and again, it's it's real tough to, you know, go over 100 years selling everyone on a dinosaur on a bone that no one's actually seen. So, there's been a lot of debate about the Amphicillus. Uh a lot of debate. Um, so, you don't hear about it. You hear about all these other large sauropods that are discovered. The Supasaurus, the Seismosaurus, the Titanosaurus, the Dreadnoughtus. I mean, there's, there's so many now. Uh, but, you know, it's just a, the Ampicillius fragilimus was always just, you know, hanging over the the edge of all these other large sauropods that are being discovered as, you know, yeah, these are cute, but what about this big boy? Uh, yeah, and, and people have tried to find more fossils uh, of the Amphicillus. Uh, I believe there was an expedition that was sent to the general area where they think it was discovered. Uh, and they tried to do, uh, like, sonar testing. You might have saw that, like, in Jurassic Park, where they, like, shoot a bullet into the ground and, and get the relay trying to see what's under, under, you know, just to see what's there. But the problem is, it's just the the bones and everything there, it's the same density as the, the soil around it. So it just, they, you just couldn't see anything. And there's a good chance, based on how fragile that, that fossil was, that it's, it's all gone. Uh... And just, you know, a lot of work goes into creating a fossil. You know, a fo you know, a petrified bone is really like, you know, bone that, you know, it's all that's materials are basically replaced, replaced by minerals. Uh, and, and you need a certain special circumstance. You know, not everything turns into a fossil. So... Well, we've had, you know, hundreds and millions of dinosaur specimens that we've discovered. That's just, you know, a splash in the pot. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll find another Amphicillus. Maybe not. Uh, but anywho, and where this gets cute, and like I said, this is my favorite dinosaur. Not so much because of the size. I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool to like the size, but I love the mystery of it. And for the longest time, I've always, you know, always wanted to believe that, you know, one day somebody's going to find another, you know, another fossil of that Cilius, and it'll never, it won't be just like an elephant in the room. It'll be this actual dinosaur. So... Nothing has changed as far as, you know, any new discovery on the Amphicillus. What has changed is some new interpretations, uh, and specifically uh, a paleontologist, Kenneth... Oh, goodness. Two hours later. Kenneth Carpenter. Kenneth Carpenter, uh, you know, worked on this a lot. And he basically proposed something else. And this proposal is based off of actually a, uh, a guy on DeviantArt that uh, you know, speculated on this in 2014 that 
you know, maybe the Amphicillus fragilibus wasn't a diplodocade. Maybe he was a different type of sauropod. And uh, what was proposed is that the, the Amphicillus was a Rebecca Sorid, uh, which basically, you know, again, the same general layout as a sauropod, but different. You know, it's thicker, and you know, it's a it's a shorter neck, shorter tail, but you know, just a, a thicker body, and the bone is, is the vertebrae is very similar to that as well. And uh, basically, in 2018, based you know, off of the inspiration from that uh, guy on DeviantArt, which I'll uh, link to his DeviantArt uh, in the uh, info below. Uh, yeah, in 2018, uh, Dr. Carpenter called it, and uh, he renamed and basically recreated the Amphicillus Fragilimus became the Maripuniosaurus Fragilimus. Which was a, like I said, you know, shorter, shorter neck, shorter tail, a lot thicker, and uh, well, I mean, while it's n no longer a uh, dinosaur of you know, a huge dinosaur of like 200 plus feet, it's still a very large dinosaur of over 100 feet. You know, definitely one of the largest sauropods ever, but not, you know. The big boy. Uh, so yeah, you know that's that's where I think the consensus is right now is that the Amphicillus fragilis, my favorite dinosaur, didn't exist. It's now you know in the Maripunius, Maripuniosaurus fragilimus, and you know that's okay because like I said, this is an ever changing field, and you know it still could happen. You know this is all based off of one one fossil. And we might find another one another day, and we'll get some more information. Uh, and uh, that's cool. Like I, I still, you know, I, I'll, I'll keep that. The Amphicillus fragilimus is, is my favorite dinosaur, and yeah, it probably didn't exist, but that's okay. And uh, yeah, that's the story of the Amphicillus. I'll try to come up with some more dinosaur stuff because, again, I love talking about this. But, you know, I have a couple other ideas. And, again, if there's anything else that you want me to uh, talk about, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, we'll go in and call it. I hope you guys have a great day. I was trying to do this all in one take and I forgot the dude's name. Ah... <sighs>